I, I don't think that he was an ex, uh, a strong enough jurist or legal thinker uh, mm -hmm. at the time uh, for that elevation. Mm -hmm. Setting aside the fact that I profoundly disagree with his interpretations of a lot of the Constitution, uh, I would not nominate Justice Scalia, although I don't think there's any doubt about his intellectual brilliance, uh, because he and I just disagree. Uh, you know, he taught at the University of Chicago, as, as did I, at, in the law school. Uh, How about John Roberts? You know, John Roberts, uh, I have to say, was a tougher question only because uh, I find him to be a very compelling person you know, in conversation individually. I, he's clearly smart, very thoughtful. I will tell you that uh, how I've seen him operate since he went to the bench uh, uh, confirms the suspicions that I had and the reason that I voted against him. And I'll, I'll give you one very specific instance, and this is okay. not a stump speech. All right. I think one of the... One, when I pick this up, it means... I, right, exactly. Uh, the, uh, I'm, get, I'm getting the cues. I'm getting the cues. Um, one of the most important jobs of, I believe, the Supreme Court is to guard against uh, the encroachment of the executive branch on the, other, the, the power of the other branches. Okay. And I think that he has been a little bit too willing and eager to give a, a administration, whether it's mine or George Bush's, uh, or more power than I think the Constitution originally intended. Okay. The role of faith-based organizations. Recent polls says 80 percent of Americans think faith-based organizations do a better job at community services than the government. Helping addictions, uh, you know, uh, all, uh, prisoner reentry, you know, all, all, the different, all the different homelessness, poverty, things like that. Now, the Civil Rights Act of 64 says that uh, faith-based organizations have a right to hire people who believe like they do. Would you insist that faith-based organizations forfeit that right to access federal funds? Well, first of all, I, I think you're, you're aware, Pastor Rick, that, uh, that I gave a speech earlier uh, this summer on faith promoting faith-based yeah. faith initiatives. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we should have an all-hands-on-deck approach yeah. when it comes to issues like poverty and substance abuse. And, and as somebody who got my start out of college working with churches mm -hmm. uh, who were trying to deal with the devastation of, of steel plants closing in, in the south side of Chicago, I know the power of faith-based institutions to get stuff done. Uh, what I have said is that uh, when it comes, first of all, to uh, funding faith-based organizations, they are always free to hire whoever they want when it comes to their own mission, who their pastor is, mm -hmm. uh, the various ministries that they want to set up. Uh, but, and this has been a long-standing rule. Like, when like it, when a Christian it, college, Christian yeah, university? Absolutely. When, it, when it comes to the programs that are federally funded, mm -hmm. then we do have to be careful to make sure that uh, we are not uh, creating a situation where people are being discriminated against using federal money. That's not new. That's, that's a concept that was true under the Clinton administration, that was true under the Bush administration. There are, in 95 percent of the circumstances, it's not an issue because people are, are careful about how they use the funds. There are some tough issues. 5% of the uh, situations where people might say, you know, I want to hire somebody of my faith for a program that is fully funded by the federal government and we're offering services to the public. Uh, and my, for my, my instance, my like in, in, in relief, like in yeah. Katrina, right. would, if, if I took people to Katrina and I wanted to hire some people to do relief, I would still, if I took federal money to help in that relief, I wouldn't be able to to say, oh, I only want people who believe like we do. Well, you know, it's one of those situations where the devil's in the details. Yeah. Uh, I think, generally speaking, yeah. faith-based organizations mm -hmm. should not be advantaged mm -hmm. or disadvantaged when it comes to getting federal funds mm -hmm. by virtue of the fact that they're faith-based organizations. Okay. Uh, they just want a, a level playing field. But what we do want to make sure of is that, as a general principle, we're not using federal funding to discriminate 
but that but that is only when it comes to the the narrow program that is being funded by the federal government that does not affect any of the other ministries that are being taken uh, that are that are taking place okay let's go to education america right now ranks 19th in high school graduations we're first in incarcerations not good not good um, 80 percent of americans recent polls said they believe in merit pay now uh, for teachers do you do you, i'm not asking you, do you think all teachers should get a raise do you think best, better teachers should be paid better they should be paid more than poor teachers i think that we should and i've said this publicly that we should set up a system of performance pay uh -huh. for teachers uh -huh. negotiated with teachers worked with work with the teachers to figure out the assessments so that they feel like they're being judged fairly uh -huh. that it's not at the whim of the principal that it's not simply based on a single high stakes standardized test mm -hmm. but the basic notion that teaching is a profession that teachers are underpaid so we need to pay them all more but and create a higher baseline mm -hmm. but then we should also reward excellence reward excellence i think that is is a concept that all okay. of us should embrace okay. Okay, taxes. This is a real simple question. Define rich. Okay, I'm, I mean, give me a number. Is it 50,000, 100,000, 200,000? Everybody keeps talking about yeah. well, who we're going to tax. Right, How right. do you define that? You know, if, 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 if you've got uh, book sales of 25 million, <laughs> then, you, uh, then you qualify. And, uh, I just want to. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, look, I'm not asking about me. <laughs> <laughs> look, the the um, he, 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 here here's how I think about it. Here's how I think about it, uh, and and this was reflected in my tax plan. Um, if you are making a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year or less as a family, mm -hmm. uh, then you're middle class. Middle class. Or you may be poor, right? I mean, but one hundred fifty down, you're, you're basically middle class. Obviously, it depends on region where you're living. Uh, In this region, you're poor. Yeah. Well, <laughs> depends. I, I don't know what housing prices have, what housing prices have been doing lately. Um, I would argue that if you're making more than 250000 then you're in the top 3 4% of this country. You're doing well. Now, these things are all relative, and I'm not suggesting that everybody who's making over 250000 uh, is living on easy street. Mm -hmm. but, but the question that I think we have to ask ourselves is, uh, if we believe in good schools, if we believe in good roads, if we want to make sure that kids can go to college, mm -hmm. if we don't want to leave a mountain of debt for the next generation, mm -hmm. then we've got to pay for these things. They, they don't come for free. And it is irresponsible. I believe it is irresponsible intergenerationally for us to invest uh, or, 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 or for us to spend $10 billion a month on a war and not have a way of paying for it. That, that I think, is unacceptable. So nobody likes to pay taxes. I, I haven't sold 25 million books, but I've been selling some books lately. <laughs> And so I, I write a pretty big check to Uncle Sam. Yeah. Nobody likes it. Uh, what I can say is, is that under the approach I'm taking, if you make $150,000 or less, you will see a tax cut. If you're making $250,000 a year or more, you're going to see a modest increase. Uh, what I'm trying to do is create a sense of balance and fairness in our tax code. One thing I think we can all agree on is that it should be simpler so that you don't have all these loopholes and big stacks of stuff that you've yeah. got to comb through, yeah. which wastes a huge amount of money uh, and allows special interests to take advantage mm -hmm. uh, of things.